Hello everyone and welcome back to Zoo Crafting! I am Zookeeper Siri and we are here in the Temperate Forest section of Zoodessia Zoo here in the world of, you'll never guess it, Zoodessia! Because we never really came up with a better name so it just sort of stuck. <laughs> Sometimes things do not have to be very complicated. But yes, welcome back, everybody. And oh my goodness, Alia, Lily, Tay, you guys, the ideas that have been just pouring into the comments of the last video have just blown me away. I am so absolutely humbled and so excited to continue going through all of those comments and coming up with ideas for what to add into the Black Bear exhibit. We're going to have to start doing ideas for what to do in the Red Wolf exhibit, but not yet. Not yet. I don't want to lose track of the ideas. So I'll let you guys know when we are looking for our enrichment architects, that's what you guys are going to be known as, when you suggest ideas for things that we could put into the the exhibits for the animals that are really unique something that really stands out makes the exhibit absolutely pop really makes it so that the animals are really happy and the people who come and see what the animals have are really happy and just something super 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 unique so you guys have totally totally just blown me away by your creativity and curiosity and the huge selection of ideas you have sent my way and random chocobo that's wandering around on top of the lily pads you guys have also blown me away with the amazing ideas that you have for the attractions that we can add in into the zoos. I have seen things that say we should do something where we have another little area that people can actually do um, birdhouse building. So we could make a bunch of birdhouses with a new Shrinky Dink mod and they could have all sorts of different designs. And then I kind of ran with that idea and I really wrote it down. I have my, my piece of paper. Do not worry. I have my paper with me on this big day of adventure so that when we come up with ideas, we might actually be able to follow through on some of them but I actually have um, written down we could do a little birdhouse building area where you could go and build a birdhouse and we could use the shrinky dink mod that we made the dioramas with it's actually called like the minecraft um minecraft texture biome resizer or something like that but I think shrinky dink mod totally kind of sums up what it actually does but we could use the shrinky dink mod to make the little birdhouses a whole bunch of fancy ones I've seen people do really fancy birdhouses using like reclaimed wood so it's like they have a little log and it's covered in, in dried moss and all sorts of really cute things there's actually a book at the local bookstore that has a bunch of birdhouses built like that and I've actually thought about buying it so we could make birdhouses in vlogs like that except you kind of need to be able to use like saws and really fancy um really fancy carpentry things and i don't think chips would like it very much if i was like darling i'm gonna go and like gather up some wild lumber from the ravine in our backyard and then i'm going to go at it with this little hand saw that's electronic and everything i don't think he'd be very happy about that so i'll have to talk to him about that before we look into it but here in zoo crafting what we could do is make a bunch of birdhouses with the shrinky dink mod which just means you build it normal size with the big blocks. Uh, actually, I don't have a single block on me. I only have plants, leeches, and wolf poop in my pockets. Well, hmm, that tells you it's a very interesting life as a zookeeper. You never know what you're going to find in your pockets, you guys. You just never know what you're going to pick up through the day. But uh, yeah, I don't have any regular size blocks on me, but you just build with the regular size blocks and then you use the Shrinky Dink mod to shrink it down. So we could make all sorts of different bird nests and bird houses to fit the different ambient birds that we could have in the world. And remember how I wanted to have that ambient animal little business where the other zoo crafters and other people we have in the world? Because not everybody we have in the world we actually have quite a large world now. Uh, I think it's like at one point it got to 13 gigabytes, which is one of the reasons we can't do a world download. It was huge. Um, but we have a whole bunch of people in the world, including people who aren't active uh, YouTubers. And I want to go out and be able to add in ambient animals in their areas. Remember talking about that? So your guys' ideas kind of give me the idea of making different birdhouses with the Shrinky Dink mod. And then what we can do is after they have bought or brought the, the materials, we could make people have to bring the materials to build, in quotation marks, the birdhouse. Then I can go and add the ambient birds to their area. So they have little NPC ambient birds kind of flying around their area. Maybe Maybe dropping seeds or leeches. Who knows? Who knows? Look at the leeches. Look, you can see the teeth on this thing. 
look at that. That is awesome. Oh man. And I love having the microscope so we can actually look closer at them. So that's really cool. And you guys had great ideas. And a few of you guys suggested bringing in all of those dead butterflies that I keep getting from noodle doodles up in our garden and putting them in here so that people can look at them up close. And I thought that was a great idea. We still need to make some books that people can have over here. So yeah, keep it coming, you guys. Keep it coming. I have a little piece of paper. Actually, I have an entire notebook. I actually bought brand new notebooks to try to keep up with all of the ideas in our series, including this one. Oh yeah. And I am going to be keeping track of things a lot better so that we can try to get through on some of that stuff. But today, you guys, today... Well, first things first, I'm going to spend a little bit of time doing just a teensy bit of zookeeper work here in the temperate forest area so that we can take care of the red wolves and mostly because I want to get some treats from the Wisteria Cafe to start our Saturday special, which means we're going to be together for a whole hour. So we've got plenty of time to do those kinds of little things. And then after we take care of things over here in the temperate forest, we're going back up to the house because finally it is time for the autumn garden and about time too, because it is almost actually winter and actually we need to get some of the pumpkins planted and I need to show you guys if I can remember hmm I really need to show you guys the picture of the pumpkin that's on my deck that the squirrels have finally broken into. They were like piranhas! I had no idea. I knew squirrels liked eating pumpkins, but they have been working on these really thick pumpkins that we had for Halloween for ages now. And yesterday I was actually watching as the super fat squirrel that we have nicknamed pumpkin because it's always eating the pumpkins and it always has like pumpkin stains on its cheeks. We've been watching it try to get into this pumpkin for ages and it finally broke in. And it was like a little piranha, you guys. It just got so excited it was thrashing and clawing and digging at the pumpkin threw its little head inside the pumpkin and started dragging out the seeds and just went bedonkers with excitement so that was really fun and I looked out my window first thing this morning and sure enough pumpkin was eating the pumpkin seeds once again so it made me really excited to have an autumn garden and maybe what we'll do is we could have a special pumpkin sort of event with all of the squirrels at the walnut center so oh my goodness yes I want to get our autumn garden up and going so that's that's long story short it reminded me we need to just hurry and get the autumn garden up and going and we are going to be moving the coconut crabs So we're going to be taking the coconut crabs via aster seed today over to the new marine area And we'll kind of scope it out I haven't been over there in months and we're going to be working in the marine area probably in January Maybe sooner than that We have some amazing new fish as you guys have seen from when we were collecting them for the lake uh, So yeah, we've got a lot to do So enough rambling, all ya All right, do you want some raw? Yeah, you want some raw chicken All right I really I should not feed you guys the raw chicken you guys I, I should be feeding you a more a more healthy diet But first thing we're gonna do today is actually spend a little bit of time with our red wolves and let me grab I know I have there's my shears we're going to be spending some time making sure red wolves have some food and actually we probably should make it so all of our animals have zookeepers that require uh, you bringing them some food if you want to earn some zookeeper experience points. And one day soon I need to figure out what we can actually use zookeeper experience points for. But now that we have uh, more of our team doing some modding like custom mods and bits and bobs for us, I bet we could even convince one of our awesome people to maybe make something so that uh, if you if you are indeed all right let me collect up all these spice leaves like if you get a bunch of zookeeper experience maybe you could have like a special set of shears that doesn't break as quickly even though still shears are pretty amazing Ooh, or i wonder if you could have like a set of uh, botanist shears where every time you used it on the plant it duplicated the plant so it like broke the plant and it always had like two that would be very interesting but i have no idea how that works so we'll just have to see all right, so we've got a bunch of raw chicken and some venison and some feathers. Also a leech. I don't know what I'm going to do with that leech. No, Lily, you already had enough food. No, don't look at me like that. All right, we're going to put this away. And then the red wolves really love sausage. Do you guys remember that? No, not sausage. What is it? Sauce. Um, What is it that they really love again? It's like, it's Tate. What is it again? I can't remember. Is it pork? Something to do with pork. Like you turn the pork into something. Uh, let's see. Use... And, hmm, I can't remember what it is. Uh, they, I, you know what? We probably should make dog biscuits for them at some point. Pork lao mein. Um, let's see. Hamburger, pizza. Oh, that reminds me. We need to make Aki's thing soon, too. That might be a side quest. We might do a little side quest. What on earth is it that the... See, I should know what the red wolves want out of life. I am their zookeeper. They don't even have a proper zookeeper. Maple. Maple, what do you want? 
Pork sausage. Oh, it changed. Oh, because we updated everything. I didn't recognize it because it changed, but they love pork sausage. So let's make some pork sausage for our red wolves just really quickly to kind of get our day moving and grooving so I can have some delicious things to eat from the Wisteria Cafe. I don't know why I don't carry some money in my Siri backpack, but I don't. I don't really carry any coins and I really should because then if I just want to buy something really quickly, I don't have to turn it into a whole hubba baloo. All right, so to make the pork sausage, I do believe we need to cook some of the pork. So we'll go ahead and cook that. Uh, if I remember correctly, so pork sausage recipe, you need cooked pork, you need, uh, oh wow, you can do like ginger and curry powder now. That's new. You need salt, mustard seeds. Oh wow, so you can use more than just the um, than just the spice leaves. That's why we have a little spice leaf garden right here. Is so when we need to make some pork sausage for the wolves, it's right there. So let me put this away and this away. Uh, anything else we can put the little feather away? Maybe, I have lots of feathers. I probably need to come and organize this area at some point in the future too, but we'll worry about that later. All right, I'll put away that. Uh, the red wolf poo can probably stay over here and we'll use it as fertilizer in the future if we need to. And what else did I need? I needed salt. Do I have salt? Yes, I have salt over here. And we could always make our own salt, even though it's kind of, it kind of, eh. see, we can come over here, like people have pointed out, and then we can come over and we can be like, okay, water bucket. No, don't turn into water like that. What? All right, water bucket and what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, how do I get water buckets again? Do I need to heart, like have wells everywhere? Curse you mods, recipe for fresh water. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that. <laughs> Please, I, oh no, when did that change? Mind Kim, what are you doing? What are you doing, Mind Kim? Okay, it looks like in order to get fresh water, I am now going to have to have a well. Well, that, that got a little interesting. That's not how I expected things to go, but at least we have enough. Uh, let's see, six cooked pork chops, and I'm gonna have to get, let me go ahead and put this here, and, oh, wait, wait, there we go. Okay, don't mind me, just trying to remember how to do everything. All right, salt, cooked pork chop, and then the spice leaves, and normally that works, hmm, but I guess we'll have to pick the cutting board up today. All right, there we go. So cutting board, and then we have the cooked pork chop. We have the salt and we have the spice leaves and there we go, the cooked pork chops so that we can have some happy, happy wolves. And I'm a little worried we don't have enough of the pork sausage for everybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and we'll take over some bones and hopefully they'll share all of the rest of the pork sausage. We'll put the salt away and I'll have to remember that apparently I need to mess around with uh, our mods a little bit, or worst to worst, I'll have to go ahead and build a whole bunch of wells where you can just get a whole bunch of the fresh water. That's something I've wanted to do because it's kind of like a long round winded thing where you have to go and you have to gather up water, then you have to put it into your inventory, then you have to take the fresh water and then you have to like cook it or something like that to get salt. And that just takes a little while. So if we could at least just cut some of that out by being able to get the fresh water, or if Relic Ruins wasn't a uh, cough cough actually being renovated right now. Ho, ho, ho. If you guys have been keeping an eye on the zoo crafting Twitter, then you know that there's something special being plotted over there. Hello, beautiful berries. But yeah, if we, um, if we can't go there to do our shopping, I'll have to figure out a better way just to get salt. Good grief. One day, one day, my friends, we will have this process so streamlined that we won't be tripping over ourselves anymore, just trying to get a few things done in the zoo. Don't worry. All right, so I think what we're gonna do now, I'm going to, can I leave this leech somewhere? I'm gonna just gently tuck this leech right over here. I don't know, maybe it'll attach itself to the raw chicken. It's not gonna get much from it though. All right, so let's go ahead and feed the dogs and then head over, grab something from the Wisteria Cafe, leave a whole bunch of these plants over with the bear exhibit because all of these are actually meant to go into the bear exhibit. There's lots of berries, so I think they'll really enjoy. And hello, Summer, thank you. <laughs> I have to scoop up more wolf poo, I see. Let me put away a few things, Summer. Oh gosh. You guys, I've been a little bit remiss in clearing out my backpack. <laughs> So I actually can't put away as many things as I was hoping. I can put my exotic flower headband on at least. All right, and Maple, come here. All right, so let's feed Maple one of the pork sausage. I've got some delicious pork sausage and some wolves to feed. All right, and we've fed that one. I couldn't even see your name, buddy. You're kind of hiding in there, but I'm glad you have some food now. 
And then there's Fluffy Mittens. Man, Fluffy Mittens, you want to stay in that exhibit, trust me. If you come over into this one, I can't guarantee anything. All right, here's Fur. Look at how big the wolves have gotten. It really is almost time to, like, invite them off into the woods, give them their own home. Here's Redwood, so we'll go ahead and feed him. Meadow, you and Redwood are probably due to have another litter pretty soon, aren't you? That's going to be so exciting when they have more babies. I don't think that they want to expand their pack right now when there's a bazillion children kind of underfoot at the moment. All right, let's see. Where is everybody? It's kind of the red wolf exhibit is so big. It can be a little bit tricky to hunt down. Well, hunt down sounds so aggressive. You know what I mean? To like locate all of the other wolves. Hmm. And actually, you know what would be really fun is if we could clear away. You guys, did I just walk out? You guys. There's a hole in the red wolf exhibit. <laughs> this isn't good. How did this happen? <laughs> Is that why my wolves are gone? Did some of our wolves escape? <laughs> There's a hole right here. What is happening? No. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just walked straight out of the exhibit. That's not supposed to happen. That's really not supposed to happen. I am a little bit remiss in having enough security. Um, here, Wolf Wolf Wolf. Oh my gosh, is that why I only found four of them? Okay, here's some oak wood. We can plug that hole up. Um, um, oh dear. Oh dear. That's all I have to say to that is oh dear. Oh dear. Oh my. All right, you guys. Um, Some of our red wolves escaped. I'm pretty darn sure. And they're kind of an endangered species. I don't think that's going to reflect very well on me. I think I need to hire more security guards. Oh my gosh, I really can't find many of them. Oh no. Keeper Adelaide, I should have had you watching this exhibit. Okay. Oh gosh, fur, you startled me. Okay, so there's fur and there's summer and maple. So we're missing like three of their siblings and I didn't see them up there at all. There's spruce, wait, spruce, fir, summer, maple. Okay, we're only missing two. Are, are they over here? No, the, that's the, the keepers. Okay, oh, or that's the, um, the elven gardener. Are they in the back of their little cave? Okay, you guys, we have a little bit of an issue. We've lost two red wolves. Um, I think that they managed to dig their way out and escape. I probably should reassess the idea of having the entire area surrounded for my predators uh, by, by leaves. I'm not sure if that's really the stable material. This is just like, you know what this is just like? That moment in Zoo Tycoon 2 when you use a weak fence and then the animal just breaks through it and runs away. The kind of, the kind of moment that we have with a lot of the dinosaurs in Zoo Tycoon 2. <laughs> So we're missing two red wolves, and I, I need to put out some discreet inquiries. Um, hmm, okay. All right, this isn't good, and I think that means... Okay, there's maple, summer, fir, spruce. Yeah, there's only four out of the six of the siblings, and redwood and meadow are still here. They're the parents. We should probably have a little chart somewhere. How do I get out of here? There we go. We should probably have a little chart somewhere that actually lists their family genealogy so that you can keep track of who's who in the Red Wolf family or keep track of the Red Wolves as a whole. So yeah, there's a lesson for us. Hmm, I'm going to have to probably replace the fencing and basically that tells me we definitely need to do an upgrade on the Red Wolf exhibit. Okay, well, hmm, I don't think there's anything else I can do about that right now, though, unfortunately. Uh, so let's finish feeding the Red Wolves and then grab our snack. <laughs> Oh, maybe they're off happy somewhere in the world, but we'll definitely have to do better about collaring and tagging and keeping track of the other red wolves we have. And at least that makes it so we can give them their bones. All right, I guess I really do only have six red wolves right now. Fooey. All right, there you go. There you go. Some bones for you to eat, some bones for you to eat, and let's go up. Oh, hey Fur, there you are. I'm not gonna spend too much longer in here. Then we'll trade our zookeeper experience points over. Hello, Redwood. Where did your kids go, by the way? <laughs> A little bit concerned about that. Hello, Meadow. I definitely need to get keepers in each and every exhibit. Hmm. All right, and out we go. Definitely need to do some re different work in the Redwood exhibit, but that's not on the list of things to do today. Just definitely on the list of things for sure. And let's go down to our wonderful Dodo ATM. And we're going to exchange all of the Zookeeper experience points that we just got for some money. Is that the... 
oh gosh, that's so cute. The little, the little uh, chocobo that's just kind of hanging out behind us. All right, and now we can go shopping and we can get something to eat, some some tea that we can sip while we think about the uh, dilemma that we've managed to get ourselves in. So let me go ahead and grab, I'm gonna get some, uh, let's get a raspberry thingy, that looks delicious. And we'll go ahead and grab a couple roseberry teas, which sounds so yummy and actually, oh, 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 some peanut butter cookies too. There we go, because we're gonna be working really hard today. We really are, because we're about to head up and do a lot of work inside of, and we'll keep some money so now I can grab food faster in the future if I ever want it oh and let me put away this extra safari net my goodness and then I totally forgot to put the plant matter away over at the bear exhibit so I need to do that we'll take our dogs with us though oh and can I put something over here let's put something on top let's put a little northern pitcher plant yeah that looks awesome right on top of this really awesome empty uh, tree trunk where we've got some dirt in the middle. I love that. Devincing offers so many opportunities for really making amazing decor for your zoo. All right, and I need an extra chest of some kind so that I can store these plants safely by the bear exhibit. There we go. And we'll go ahead and leave that in here. I'll grab a double chest just because. And then let's go ahead and drop these berries over at the bear exhibit and then head on up to the house because we have an Aki to visit with. We have in a summer garden to take down. We have an autumn garden to begin and we have to go get Astro Seed away from, oh, hey, hmm, I wonder why these tree stumps seem to glow, right? Keeper Adley, they're amazing. They help to light up the area very nicely. And then we have a new marine area to examine. Oh. And I, you got to keep moving. You got to keep moving because I, I know that keeping a good flow is just so important to making sure that you feel like you're getting stuff done in life. Not only with things in the zoo, but everything in life, you guys. Yes, everything. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and put this right here. So it's outside of the bear area. Uh, that can go back. Yeah, right. we'll just stick this down here and over here. The amber shard we can take with us. The leather we can go ahead and take with us. Ferns can stay. Oh, the spice leaves I guess we can go ahead and take with us. All right, anything else for the bear exhibit? Hmm, we might be able to put some duckweed down. A lot of you guys had the great idea of adding in maybe some of the fish for the black bear exhibit so the black bears could eat fish but remember the black bears actually primarily eat plant matter so it may be better to put down a lot of berries it may be better to put down a lot of mushrooms or maybe some honey honeycombs and honey so that they could maybe have the opportunity to sort of eat those things as well uh, actually i don't think you can put mushrooms back down on the ground unless there's podzel so we'll go ahead and bring that with us Hmm, the herb garden can probably stay, and the ground covers can probably stay, and then anything here? Ah, uh, blackberries. Oh, trail mix, yummy! I totally forgot we had so much trail mix on us. And then we'll leave the seeds here because these seeds can become moss if we need to put the moss down on anything. And I'll also leave the leaves. <laughs> I'll leave the leaves. Oh, that's terrible, Siri. Terrible, terrible. All right, so there we go. We've got some future things to possibly decorate the exhibit with. Oh, and you know what? I'm going to leave one of the water buckets because we did need those water buckets for adding in the little waterfall. Ah, oh, you guys, our zoo really is starting to look amazing. All right, let's head home. Let's head home. We have snacks. We've taken care of the red wolves. We've discovered something very important about the fact that they are actually escaping. And now we've got other work to go do in the zoo. Can't wait to get so many things done. And once we complete our temperate forest area, it's going to be so fantastic to do those special episodes where we can get some of you guys in as the uh, NPC guest, where you can go ahead and like put in a comment and I'll use a big giant random generator and we'll see which people end up getting chosen by the random generator. And maybe, maybe I'll like, ah, I'm going to eat the little raspberry trifle. Wonderful. And collect these berries really quick on our way home. But I may even like do it kind of, uh, do it kind of like maybe I'll pick a few of them like I'll pick one or two that really stand out and then have the random generator pick the rest so that it's fair in all sorts of ways and then we'll have NPC guests wandering around that part of the zoo and that is going to make it feel actually alive because the thing is when you build up and you build up the oh hi sunflower where'd your clone go why are the clones like being made and then disappearing again I don't understand oh gosh all right let's just work up here but when you make this amazing zoo and then it's empty, it doesn't quite feel right. It feels like it's missing something important. And so that's why I'm really excited. Hello, puppies. Everybody's just teleporting straight up, huh? All right, let me go ahead and put these things away really quickly. We're just going to dump them into like one of these chests and then we'll sort it all out later. All right, there we go. There we go. 
and I can sort that out another time. We might even do side quests because some, sometimes, oh, I did have a couple coins. Because sometimes some of you guys are like, yes, I love watching it being sorted. So we might do some like sorting side quest where we just chill and relax and talk together. And there we go. Let me put these down. Garnet shards. Gold. Dun, dun, dun. Got a little bit of gold. That was a fun little mining expedition. I really do love mining in this world. Uh, let's see. The rest of those things can go elsewhere. Rose. Oh, that's the rose quartz from the Rosarium Wildlife Park. Oh, uh, now I want to go visit Eros again and see what she's got going on over there. She does such an amazing job and I hear that her little mice have had their babies. All right. Let's go ahead and put this in. Oh gosh, we have so much to sort later. Later, later. All right, we'll add more down here. Lots and lots of fossils, lots and lots of fossil pieces to mess with later. Um, is that good? <gasps> Phew, that's how easy it can be, you guys. That's how easy it can be to just kind of clear everything out. And there we go, and deal with it later. There we go. I'm kind of like the, the kid who just shoves everything in their closet and like tries to sort it out later. <laughs> but we'll deal with that later, all right. But yeah, we might do some sorting side quests. We'll see. We'll see. All right. So here we go. Finally home. <laughs> Agent Noodles, do you have anything for us? Oh, he's got a little short grass. Thank you, Agent Noodles. Noodle Doodles working hard. Now let's see where Aki has gone. Because Aki right now, oh, she's hanging out under her Yutsu tree. Aki, look at you. I think she's a little bit alarmed because her entire autumn gar or her entire garden is more or less empty. Other than the, the uh, melons that are in here. So, all right. Sit tape. There we go. All right, so what we are gonna do today is we are going to remove all of these summery flowers. And then once we have done that and maybe put down a few different plants for um, for Aki to start enjoying for the autumn garden, and we're, we will eventually remove these trees too, but I'll do that myself. Then we are going to Oops, sorry about that. All right, so then after we put down a whole bunch of awesome seeds so that Aki will have plenty to harvest for the autumn garden, we are then going to come over and grab these coconut crabs and we are going to escort them over to the ocean. And that's gonna be really, really exciting. I know I've been looking forward to it for quite a while. So I think we're gonna take over this little island right here for the coconut crabs for now. We'll kind of put them there because I think they'll be nice and safe. We might do a little bit of preliminary exploring just in the area to kind of get an idea of what is going to go over here. And then we will We'll come back and we will resume work in the temperate forest area because out of everything oh thank you so much noodle noodles <laughs> he is really gathering a lot of this grass and stuff for me right now but out of everything that i really want to see done in zudasia zoo honestly finishing area finishing an area at least for the basics and being able to have the guest come like i was saying is on the top of the list because i really want to see the npc guest walking around and interacting with the area and that would mean a lot because it would really bring the area to life with you guys here and that's something i've always always craved and i can't bring you guys like actually onto the server but at the very least what we can do is make sure that you guys are wandering around saying things that you guys would say if you saw the exhibits and having a good time so let's get started all the puppies are sitting so that they won't try to accidentally pick up all of this stuff. Aki is so confused and just like forlornly harvesting the little bit of a bamboo that she has over there. All right, you guys. Whew. So we got a little bit of an autumn garden done. Sorry if that was a little bit distracting. I just really love it. And I get, I get kind of sucked up into taking care of all of the plants. We're going to just put down like a few experimental rosemary seeds right here. And then we'll see if she's actually able to harvest those herbs. And if she is, that would really change the name of the game and being able to grow more of these herbs because you could add herbs and they add status effects onto all of the food that you create. So there we go. Autumn garden. Not completely done. I still have to remove these trees and then we'll have to do some decorating. But now little Aki will actually have something to work with. And I am convinced that this is very beautiful. These lilac and sunflower bouquets are absolutely amazing. And I would love to see a lot of lavender. So if we could figure out a way to grow lavender, that would be really cool too. So let me go ahead. Anything else to put away? Just a couple plant things. And then I'm going to go ahead and sleep so the rain goes away. And... I'm going to snag these guys and I will see you guys in just a moment when we'll be flying off to go see what the new marine area is going to look like. <laughs> and there is so much stuff in this chest. 
What am I even gonna do with all of this? We can try planting some of the saffron bulbs just for just for giggles, just to see if Aki is able to take care of those as well. But my goodness. Okay, well, I've actually opened up this big chest, which is just kind of like our dumping grounds chest. And we usually grab a whole bunch of random things from here as random gifts for our friends when we go visit too. But we have all of the crabs safely inside of Safari Nuts. So all of our coconut crabs are safely put away. And I was snagging any of the bird eggs that we might have had lingering in here. So we could take them down to the Uology Center, the Bird Egg Research Center. That we, or I should say the Egg Research Center. <laughs> I'm not sure if Uologists actually would study like, I don't know, platypus eggs. That would be really cool if that's like part of the job too. But I went ahead and snagged those because we're going to go and see Aster Seed and fly all the way over to the ocean with these coconut crabs now. So Martha, I shall see you later. I feel very happy with what has been done in the garden. I think I was more than a little bit distracted because it actually was raining the entire time we were over here and the rain can kind of wear on your senses after a while I'm finding but the garden looks good for a good start we'll maybe spend some side quest or just like a nice relaxing day now and then working on adding more of an herb garden over there and working on expanding what we need in this garden in terms of decorations but for now we have a mission of safely escorting these coconut crabs to a new area oh I should take some coconut trees with me of course what was I thinking I can't leave the coconut crabs on their island if they don't have any coconuts and you guys remember from talking about the coconuts that or the coconut crabs I should say that they don't just eat coconuts they're opportunistic scavengers they'll kind of nibble a little bit of everything um but we still want to make sure you know we've provided some opportunities for edibles for them so let me see do I have any no no jungle saplings over here do I have any jungle saplings over here I have a couple so let's go ahead we'll take a couple jungle saplings with us uh, we'll make like a couple normal jungle tr sapling trees. Oh, we have a ton of them. Never mind. I can take a whole bunch of jungle saplings with us. Look at how pretty they are too. And we'll go ahead and grab some coconuts out of downstairs because if we can bind the coconut with, oh my gosh, you can make a snake gourd lattice. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds amazing. And the cookie bush. How could I have forgotten the cookie bush? Okay, we'll work with that in the future. That got me very excited. We will definitely work with that in the future. But for now, we're going to make some coconut saplings. So we're going to go grab some coconuts. And I'm also going to make sure I have some bone meal on me. So I'm gonna turn these bones into bone meal and safely put that away so that we can use those and we can put down some tropical garden pieces while we're there too. So the coconut crabs definitely will have a nice healthy start to life until we're able to go back and work with them, which may be a little while, but I don't think they're gonna go anywhere. And actually now that I think about it, I don't know how long a coconut crab actually lives for. So that might be something, thank you noodle doodles. That might be something very interesting to study in the future too. Also that was a lot of saffron, that was amazing. We're gonna go ahead and sprinkle the saffron down here and the oregano right there. And I'm gonna toss the saffron in here and let's go grab those coconuts. So downstairs, no, I'm trying to dodge so much tea. <laughs> so many tea leaves. Oh, and I'm sorry if I've been so distractible today, you guys. It's really hard to jump in when there's so many things going on and so much to do and complete those things and not get sidetracked, but I'm going to work on it and try to become better. Also, it looks like we're going to have to have some sort of fruit slash slushy slash delicious uh, dessert stand because this is more watermelon and pineapple and cantaloupe than I have ever seen in any of our zoo crafting. So I didn't know Aki's been so delicious. We need to help Aki out by transforming so many of the foods into other things. She really is like we, we are not ever going to be hurting for food because she is so diligent and works so hard. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make a coconut sapling now. Hello, little chips. Do you want to help me out? Let's put the jungle sapling down and the coconut and voila, coconut saplings. And we're off. All right, Aki, I'll be back later. Enjoy the little garden that uh, you now have to work with. We'll have to keep an eye on the herbs and see if she actually does work with them. So far, it seems like she must. So that would be really useful. And we're going to leave the dogs here because we're about to take off on Sunflower. I'll be back later, puppies. Everybody be good. Hey, Ash. How's Relic doing? Relic the puppy. Um, huh. Relic looks like he's got some growth issues going on, and I have no idea what that's about, but power to you, Relic. You've kind of become a two-headed dog. We'll worry about that later. And let's head out. Oh my goodness. I can't wait to be more organized. I say that all the time, but like I said, I'm just going to have to prove it. Prove it through what we do. All right, let me put this away. 
So Relic's little amulets that he drops. Definitely need to find out the mystery of that one day. But there's so many mysteries and so many things to do in the zoo. Alright, so let's go jump on Sunflower. We're going to take off. I feel really good having gotten the summery feel of the garden taken care of. And my hope is that we can start finishing an exhibit every week. That might be a little ambitious, but that's my new hope. Alright, so let's get in here. Hello, Zinya! How are all the hummingbirds? Oh my gosh, there's a little mouse on top of... <laughs> there's a tiny little mouse on the top of our hummingbird aviary. Oh, that's hilarious. I hope it's happy up there. The hummingbirds seem like they're doing pretty well, zipping around as usual. It might be really fun. Let's go through the small door so we don't have any escape. It might be really fun to try to make the hummingbirds some custom flowers using the Shrinky Dink mod in the future too. All right, so we're almost to the tiger exhibit because that is where I actually left Aster Seed. While we're over here, let's see how this thing is doing on collecting up the blaze powder. <gasps> you guys, look at this! I love this gather item thing! Look at how much it has gathered! Three stacks of blaze powder? That's gonna be enough to hatch so many eggs! Oh, that's so exciting! Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put these little eggs away. We have some parrot eggs and another unidentified egg, which we'll work with in the future. You have to make a little egg sorter so it will identify what type of egg it is. That'll be really fun to work with. All right, everybody, you guys stay, you guys stay happy. All right. And where is my, there's my roseberry tea. And you guys, our fish are still alive. It is a miracle. So it seems that removing that big giant tree trunk that we had in the middle of the water exhibit before is the secret key to what we need to do to success at safely making this a good exhibit for all of our fish. So hopefully they'll adjust very well over here. But one thing at a time, Siri. I've just got so many things on my mind all the time and we're just gonna focus. <laughs> I'm sorry I keep saying that. It's like a mantra. I just have to keep dragging myself back on track. All right. Astrocene, I knew I left you here. I'm so happy to see you again. I missed you, buddy. Are you ready to go on a big flying trip? I'm so excited. We're going to be taking some coconut crabs to the ocean, and it's been a long time since we've headed out that way. I don't have any teleporters out there, too, which is why we're going. Ah, oh, and this, you guys, is the redone tiger exhibit. So I definitely, I think I need to go over it again and maybe consider like a few of the details that a few of the details like the cloning tigers what is this what is this all right here's one of our tigers bar right there's amber is there another amber there's another amber why who knows? Who knows why the cloning mysteries work the way they do? Maybe they had a cub. I'm going to say that this is their cub. So Amber is a child that they had together without me realizing it. But this is our South Chinese tiger exhibit and it still needs quite a bit of upkeep and I need to go over it again and it's got random things and in, in places that they don't belong. But we'll take care of it in the future and we're going to be changing from this model of explaining uh, facts about the tigers where we used to make a bunch of books and then you could go through and you could read all of the different books. We're going to be shifting from that to what we do over in the giraffe exhibit. And actually, Astro Seed, let's go visit the giraffe exhibit really quick on our way over. Ah, oh, we can do that. I haven't seen my giraffes in so long. And I don't even think most of you guys know what I'm talking about with the signs in the giraffe exhibit. Astro Seed, let's take off and do this. I'm so excited. I haven't seen my little giraffes in ages. Oh, this is going to be wonderful. All right, off we go way over the big empty expanses of this jungle where one day I hope to have some exhibits. You can see the path that we made back when we were talking about elephant facts. We learned a lot about elephants that day too. It was pretty interesting. All right, there's the oh, butterflies. Oh, it's been so long since I've seen the butterflies. And here we are, the big safari area. Oh my goodness. Um, I'm gonna have to fix that because the sign should not be that big. Something very drastically wrong happened to this sign. <laughs> this is the entrance to the safari zone and this sign should not be this huge. What happened? What happened sign? Oh dear, I'm going to have to fix you. Okay. Yeah, it shouldn't be that big. Aspect ratio. Um, you should be a lot smaller than that. So we'll work on that later. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have no idea. I have no idea what happened there. Um, we'll definitely, we'll definitely be playing with that. 
Okay, that's a little bit better. A little bit better, but I'll be playing with this later to fix it again. But this is the beautiful painting that actually I have on my wall from Katie. And this is made with the giraffe in the background. I totally love it. It is so pretty. It is gorgeous. It's one of my favorite things to have in my office. And we made it the entrance to the safari zone right over here. Sunset on the safari, a donation from the tiny animal rescue zoo painted by Katie. So that's the entrance to the safari area. You know what? This is a life lesson. If I focused and got a few things done, there's our termite mound. Oh, it's been so long since we've even seen the termite mound. Then we'd be able to do so much. And our giraffes. Oh, our beautiful giraffes. Oh, you lovely things. You lovely, lovely giraffes. I have missed you guys too. And the little giraffe feeding stations we made. And all of the beautiful plants we put down here. And the birds! How could I have forgotten our special birds that we have over here? Oh, hello giraffes. Hello. Just trying to come up so I can get a good view. There we go! So, some of our oxi, is that, are that what they are? Oh gosh, I can't believe I forgot. I'm pretty sure these are like the ox peckers. There we go. Who help to pick chicks off of a bunch of the animals in uh, Africa. And let's work our way into the giraffe barn. <laughs> where one of our giraffes, oh hey Safflower! Oh my goodness, it's been so long. Oh, we should do zoo tours more often. Ah, this sign's all wonky donkey too. I have no idea what happened here either. I'll have to try to fix it later. All right, but what we're trying to do is put down these different signs throughout the entire zoo. So if you want to learn something about the animals, then instead of looking at that kind of messy pile of books and the messy looking um, bibliocraft desk, what you can do is walk up to the sign and you can actually just go, okay, what is the dietary guidelines for a giraffe? And you can learn about those things. And you can go, okay, how much water do they drink? And you can learn about those things. And that's what I want to put in front of each and every one of the exhibits. That's what I mean about focus. All right, Aster Seed. Let's go ahead. We're going to fly across the land and we are hopefully going to head in the right direction too. No. Okay, let's... Uh, there I am. And so I think we're just going to go pretty much due north and that should take us up to where the, um, the ocean is. And that is where we are going to be leaving our coconut crabs and giving you guys kind of just a very quick little preview of some of the areas that we'll be working with with our marine exhibits in the future. Beautiful swamp right here. The Enderman village. Oh, look at all of the animals. So many animals. The Enderman village that we're going to have is in this area too. <gasps> Appetites. Okay, don't mind me. There's a reason. Oh, and there's actually a Komodo dragon. It has been a long time since I've seen one of those guys. All right, don't judge, but I need it. Oh, hang on. Oh, you guys, I forgot I was wearing the flower crown and I was like, why are the sheep coming after me? I just wanted the sulfur shelf, but I needed that sulfur shelf uh, so that we can give it as a gift to the Moo Tinder at E. Rose's Mushroom Cafe. So many little mushrooms over here. Oh, there's more Komodo dragons. Oh my goodness. It's been so long since we've just taken flight and, and started wandering around the place. All right, yutsu trees, lavender. Is that lavender? I think that's little, no, those are wildflowers. Hello, everyone. Wow, this is like a beautiful safari area. It even has ostriches. It's been a long time since I've seen ostriches too. Oh, wow, turkeys. Yeah, we're gonna have to do, oh, there's eggs. Okay, okay, let's go ahead and settle in. We're gonna take just a little peek. What is that? It's a baby ostrich! Wait, no, it's a peafowl! What? A wild peafowl? I've never seen a wild peafowl! This is so cool! It's our very first wild peafowl! She even has a little egg next to her! I don't think I've ever seen a wild peafowl! Do you have a little baby in here? No, sorry, ma'am. There you go. You have a flower, though. That's very, that's very pretty. There you go. She had a couple flowers. Wow, I have never seen a wild peafowl. There's another one! That is so cool. I wonder if this is their little nest or is this your nest, Mr. Gobble Gobble? Hang on, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take a little peek. It's a toucan egg! Okay, sorry. We've got to take that with us. I don't think I have very many toucans. All right, and let's see, what is that? <gasps> okay! Would you guys like to see our rhinos? Would you like to see the rhinos? Autumn gardens and rhinos today, apparently. I was not expecting to run into you, sir. You're huge and magnificent. Um, wow. Okay. You guys, we found a rhino. I think I need to take it home with us and we'll have to work on the safari zoo sooner than I thought. But the, 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 the what I'll start doing, 
I'll, I'll make a lemon list. I swear, I swear, I swear. And then we'll start going down it because I know we need to finish the temperate forest area first. So maybe I'm going to have to go ahead and leave these rhinos here for now. This is really, really amazing though. Rhino discovery is not something you see every day. I am so excited. Look at this. Look at this guy. He's amazing. He's a tank. He's a literal tank. And he is over here inside of this desert biome. So we'll have to come back. I wonder why he's in a desert biome. We will have to come back and fetch this rhino when the time comes. I cannot believe it. I have never seen these guys in the wild before. So that's really exciting. Oh, that's that's a Pavo thing in case you guys were wondering. And you were trying to figure out where are those from? They're another amazing Pavo creation. Wow, that was exciting. I have not seen them yet because I haven't been able to, to even start thinking about working on their exhibit. So I haven't peeked. All right. Are we almost here? Are those jellyfish? Oh, those are squid. Oh my gosh, those are squid. Those are squid. It has been so long. Look at the squid. Look at the squid. Oh, they're so cool looking. It has been so long since I've seen squid. Are there penguins down here? Oh my goodness. There's a bunch of Humboldt penguins. I'm pretty sure that's a Humboldt penguin at least. Ah, this is so cool. This is so cool, you guys. <laughs> Look at all these squid. Look at all these penguins. We saw we saw rhinoceros for crying out loud. There's sea oats everywhere. I think there's there's more creatures over here. What part? We're right at the very edge of it. This is so cool. I am very happy right now. This is amazing. All right, so we're gonna fly over here. And the little island that we are putting the coconut crabs down should be right over here. And I'm feeling it. I'm getting better at figuring out the balance between... Look at all that coral! Figuring out the balance between giving ourselves challenges and just getting a darn move on already, Siri. And I'm really feeling that lately. So thank you guys. This is oh, just... This is what I want to share with you is the excitement about discovering new things and the excitement about being able to celebrate the natural world. Is this the little island that we've been seeing? Yeah, this is the little island. This is the little island that we saw on the map. We're actually here. Aster Seed, this is so awesome. All right, hang on just a second, Aster Seed. Oh, there's a burning pile of oil over there. Who knows how long that's going to be on fire. Hmm. We'll have to see if maybe the rain can put it out when we're here. And you can see there's so much coral. There's so much coral. I'm pretty sure I have a night vision helmet. So let's put the night vision helmet on really quickly and take a peek. All right, let me see. Yeah. The sensing night vision, night vision, and water breathing. I forgot about that fact. So we can actually take a good peek at all of the coral that's down here. Isn't this so pretty? Isn't this just lovely? There's so many different types. There's so many different types. Look at that. That one's so cool looking. And now our job is going to be probably, well, stopping the fire on that oil little spurt for one thing and then kind of roping this area off and filling it up with so many marine animals what is that it's wiggling it's wiggling there's a clam yeah we need to get some scuba suits and we need to make it so you can go scuba diving maybe keep an eye on the penguins i i can't remember if we have pelicans i think we have pelicans pretty sure we have pelicans make it so there's pelicans and seagulls hanging around Aster seed, this is going to be absolutely awesome. All right, so what we're going to do now, though, is turn this into a little coconut crab island. And I think it'll be okay. It's got some foxes, but it is actually separated by a very teensy margin, but it is separated from the main area. What is this? Oh, it's a, it's a little, it's a little rest in peace spot. It's a little grave. <laughs> I couldn't think about the word grave for a second. I was just like, rest in peace spot? Oh, what's this? It's a cute little cave inside of this island. Oh, I like it. Oh dear, now I'm stuck. Okay, well, let me go ahead and get out of here. All right, there we go. And we'll just put the sand piece down. Whoops, okay, made the sand fall. All right, so I think what we're gonna go ahead and do now is actually clear out these trees. So let me go ahead and put on my still leaf just because I can. We're gonna clear out these trees and we're going to plant down the palm trees instead and make this a little palm tree island. And then we can leave our little coconut crabs over here to hang out and be very, very happy. And hopefully have the very, very beginning of what will be our marine areas, our marine exhibits in the future. Which is definitely going to be in the future. Because like I was saying, sometimes it's hard for me to like jump in and out ah, of so many projects. And I know I'm so bad about that. And that frustrates a lot of people. Trust me, it frustrates me too. 
And it's something I'm working on in, in every aspect of my life. But I'm going to start making my little list. This was on my little list to remove the coconut crabs from our yard. It did have to be done. And we'll go through the little list and we will make sure that we take good care of our animals. All right, hang in there, coconut crabs. I'm going to give you some coconut samplings in just a second. So here's the bone meal. That should help it grow. And let's see if we can get these up here. So let's try coconut sapling right there. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. It's got a little coconut tree. Okay, good. And then let's try, ooh, here's a good spot for another one right there. And yeah, all right, they're tiny. <laughs> they're so short. I, I thought they'd be a little bit taller. And right there, there we go. So there's some coconut trees. And now we can add in some palm trees, I hope. Please grow there. Okay, maybe they won't. <laughs> jungle sapling, jungle sapling. Come on, all right, there's one. Come on, there's another. Any, ah, oh, darn. Okay, we'll just have to leave that one and hope it'll grow eventually. And we'll put one right there. And will you go down? Nope, won't go down on sand. And then maybe one over here. And we'll have to just hope that those grow. All right, so let me go ahead and get our little coconut crabs set up on Little Coconut Crab Island. And I'm also going to give this a little waypoint so that we know this is Coconut Crab Island. And this is going to be the first spot from where we're going to start working on our marine exhibit. So that'll be some point in the future. Oh my gosh, why are they so cute? Why are these crabs so cute? I have no idea why I love them so much, but just seeing them scuttling around, so happy, a little fist up, they're gonna fight ya. Wandering around on their little island with the coconut trees behind them. They've already given me so many coconuts. <laughs> and the little palm tree right below him. I just love him. Doesn't he just look like he's gonna be happy here? He's got the big ocean behind him and I just I hope this is gonna be a very happy coconut crab I mean, he's even got a penguin hanging out in the tree behind him So hopefully hopefully the coconut crabs will do very well here They won't wander too far because this island is not connected up with the mainland area And I mean, I guess it is a little bit interesting that we're kind of taking over this island, but it's for the sake of education It's for the sake of education Master seed and so eventually we'll be back over here and I'm feeling it the excitement of seeing the penguins the excitement of being in a new area the excitement of being able to see how excited you guys were and how many ideas you guys had for all of the things that we could do in our zoo and all of the attractions we could add really have reminded me that it's so much fun to kind of run around and just do anything I want but then if I'm frustrated and going why hasn't my zoo getting more things done I just ah if I'm wondering why that's happening it's probably because I I need to just spend the time making things a little nicer and don't you dare eat my coconut crabs Mr. Fox. Hmm. In fact, I wonder, you know what I think, uh, you know what I think we're gonna do? I think we're gonna just gently snag this little fox and especially because he's swimming towards an open flame of oil. What are you doing, fox? Oh my gosh. All right. I'm gonna gently pick him up and we're gonna gently relocate him onto the mainland so that he doesn't get into trouble. But yeah, I, I just thank you guys. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the excitement and especially thank you for your curiosity. That really is the driving force behind everything. The sense of curiosity and the sense of wanting to be able to share the beauty of the natural world with you and all of the amazing ideas that you guys have. And oh, I'm so happy our little coconut crabs are here. So that huge big project of putting the coconut crabs in is finally done. We can fly our way back home. If I can orient myself in the right direction, I have zero sense of direction. You should just ask Chips. He's actually a little concerned when we go out uh, and if I'm by myself because I... <gasps> Whales. Yeah, I needed that. You guys, there's whales here. I have goosebumps. If I needed a reminder at how it's not just scuttling around and trying to get one thing done after another, but it's also just about the joy and the beauty of sharing this gorgeous world that we've built here with you guys. This has been it. Cool. Aster Seed. That I didn't expect. That, that takes my breath, breath away, Aster Seed. That's just... Oh my gosh. They just showed up out of nowhere. Wow. All right, we're gonna head home. I'm gonna continue to strive to be a different theory in a good way every day and share 
this world that we've built with you guys in a way that can inspire you to look out your window and go on walks and go maybe searching for pods of whales swimming in the ocean if you so wish. Ah, and we're going to see our zoo really become something awesome. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.